last section of uh, pick coronaviruses. And so in this one, we're going to talk a little bit about disease. And I don't know, maybe I should have started off with this one. I'm not sure. But um, we got there in the end, I guess. Uh, so what I want you to do is uh, at the end of the blackboard right here, blah, 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 you're going to copy this little link and you're going to paste it in and it's going to take you to this video. And uh, yeah, this is about one of the last people uh, to have polio. And this is an iron lung. And you know what? This guy is something else. He's, um, well, yeah, I'm not going to spoil the uh, the secret for you. It's a pretty short uh, video. There you go, seven minutes. And, uh, yeah, it's a heck of a thing. Yeah. So uh, this is a very common site, or rather was a very common site back when polio was around. Uh, so think 1920s, 1930s. There were a lot of people in this same shape. Uh, living in, um, yeah, iron lungs, just like this. There we go. So, uh, yeah, you, you watch this, and I think you'll actually like it. It's uh, pretty powerful stuff for a short little seven-minute video. Really uh, brings home uh, the idea of polio and the disease. Okay, so, meantime, after you've done that, so you've paused this video and come back, I'm assuming, let's uh, talk uh, therapy in terms of vaccines. So, uh, yeah, one of the most successful vaccines ever developed, uh, the polio vaccine. And there are actually two um, different approved polio vaccines and a whole bunch more just really neat ideas that are not yet currently uh, approved, but uh, people are working on these. So the disease that polio virus causes is called poliomyelitis. And so polio means gray, myel means marrow, and itis is an inflammation uh, of something. So uh, inflammation of the gray marrow of the spinal cord, which is a place where you should not have inflammation. You shouldn't have these white blood cells, uh, things like neutrophils and macrophages running around loose in there because they break a lot of stuff. And that is exactly what happens. Um, it quite often leads to flaccid paralysis, which is, uh, you know, your limb is still there, but you can't move it uh, because of nerve damage. So direct nerve damage. Yeah, pretty terrible. And we also know that antibodies can be protective, um, whether they're in your intestines, because this is normally an enteric virus, so it'll be in the gut. Um, but uh, yeah, antibodies can really help and uh, potentially in your bloodstream. In your intestines, they're going to stop you from getting the virus in the first place. In your bloodstream, they're going to contain the virus. So even if it does infect your intestines, if it tries to get into the bloodstream in order to make it to your spinal cord and actually cause poliomyelitis, your antibodies there would uh, have a chance to pick them up. So the uh, two main kinds are the sulk and the sabin. And uh, the sulk has a K at the end, which tells you that it is killed. Um, uh, it is a uh, killed vaccine. So they've uh, chemically inactivated the virus. And the nice thing is that it is safe. The not so nice thing is that it is not as effective. So only 20 to 30 percent of people will develop immunity after one vaccine. But on the positive side, there is no chance of contracting poliomyelitis from this vaccine because the virus is not functional. Now, the other way to do it is the Sabin vaccine. So this is a live attenuated vaccine. And if I remember right, it has lots of mutations, but there's only six of them that are really important. And the thing is, occasionally uh, the virus will mutate all of these mutations back to the wild type, like the normal kind of polio that uh, hurts you. And um, uh, when that happens, about one out of a million people vaccinated will get poliomyelitis. So the idea is that if you've got an area where there's a lot of polio or like early on in the uh, uh, response, you want to go in with the Sabin uh, vaccine, which is the live attenuated vaccine, because you get more bang for your buck. You get uh, around 80 percent, around four out of five are going to develop long term immunity. But uh, many of those are going to shed live virus, and uh, yeah, some people will get polio uh, from this because it's a live virus. Then after you've cleaned out most of the polio, then you go back in with the Salk vaccine. So it's attenuated, which is nice, uh, or rather uh, inactivated, which is uh, especially nice. Not as effective, but it gives you enough to get to something like herd immunity. <clears throat> 
Now, even this is not ideal because the Salk vaccine requires you to actually grow a whole lot of real live disease causing polio in order to uh, inactivate it uh, for the vaccine. And so there are people that are trying to make a recombinant virus-like particle vaccine. And so the virus-like particle would be just the P1 region. So VP1, VP2, VP3, and VP4 will assemble by themselves. And if there's no other genome there, if the genome's not there and the loader's not there, they will not get loaded with anything and the cell can just make these little particles. And so you can make them in... Um, either bacteria or yeast or insect cells and just raise up giant quantities of these things. And uh, yeah, you could uh, give these to a person and it would be like an injection of a little bit of protein. Almost no way it could have any harm, but some people are in such a fragile state that even a protein injection can harm them. And so it's going to be real rare, but um, uh, it would be much safe, safer for the world than either of the other two vaccines. So once we see final eradication, and we are so close to that, um, uh, then I think you're gonna see uh, the shift over to the VLP vaccine uh, and even away from the Salk vaccine. So then nobody has to grow this thing and we can just let it die. Yeah. All right, so how do we make these things? Well, the Sabin vaccine's got a neat little um, uh, history. So uh, Sabin vaccine starts out, and uh, we've got Sabin type 1, 2, and 3. Um, they started out, and the way they do this is they will adapt the virus to different kinds of growth that are all quite distinct from what it would encounter in a person. So if you were to grow this virus in people over and over again, the idea is that it would get really good at growing in people, and then, uh, yeah, it might, might, be, might be worse, might cause more disease but by growing it in some kind of monkey. So here we have a, uh, looks like a, a rhesus monkey, probably. Or here in a, uh, looks like a chimpanzee. Um, and so you can alternate that with uh, growing it in these uh, uh, kidney cells. So uh, these are probably Vero E6, which are from a uh, Cercopithecus uh, monkey. It's called a green monkey. Um, and uh, so, yeah, they're growing it in there and then passaging and then purifying by with plaques. So you'll actually make the plaques and um, you can just go into each plaque and pick a little bit of virus. And that will have come from one clone so you can get the purest possible virus that way. And uh, yeah, so doing this just a few times, uh, it looks like uh, 24, then 43, then five passages or three, then four, then one passage or 20, then 8, then 34 passages, and uh, what do you know? You end up with uh, potential vaccine strains. So these have been used for um, uh, type 1, 2, and 3 uh, polioviruses. And uh, there are three different strains out there, and uh, you need different vaccines to uh, combat each one. <clears throat> So, let's see, the Salk was the uh, first one, was the inactivated one. It was replaced by the Sabin, and the Sabin is what actually helped us get rid of the, um, rid of the polio virus uh, from the U.S. and from the rest of the world. Now, uh, I had a babysitter when I was growing up who was one of the last people to catch polio virus, wild polio virus, in the U.S., and she was from Arkansas. And Arkansas was the last place or the next to last place to get rid of polio for finally. And she caught it, uh, must have been just a year or so before uh, um, uh, got rid of it. And so she was a little girl at the time. Uh, she um, grew up, she had some paralysis, like some use of her legs. She could still walk, but it didn't end up growing in right. And so she had to wear a special boot that was extra thick on the one side, kind of like those pictures I showed all the way at the beginning of the um, of this uh, slide set. And uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, other than that, she seemed to lead a just fine life. She was, uh, yeah, lived to a very old age, so that's good. All right. Um, so the idea is that the injectable, inactivated Salk vaccine is going to give you IgG-mediated immunity. So this would be good for preventing polio from progressing to poliomyelitis. So you could get polio diarrhea, but nothing more than that. The Sabin vaccine, which you take uh, in your mouth, um, which is the one they tend to use now, um, uh, or tended to use until fairly recently anyway, 
gives you a nice, strong uh, gastrointestinal immunity. So all along your gut lining, you're going to be making that immunoglobulin type A. So this is the uh, last one, and IgG is the one before the last uh, form of immunoglobulin that you make in your body. Um, but occasionally, yeah, it does mutate back because it's live. And so, uh, yeah, look at 1988. These countries in red were countries where poliovirus was still endemic, where you could just catch it by accident from uh, the water or, you know, yeah, mostly from the water, contaminated water. So, uh, yeah, as close as Mexico, not far away. Look at that. Parts of Western Europe, even Spain, still had live polio. That's a lot of people that live in this part of the world. And so, uh, yeah, even as recently as the 80s, there was still uh, a lot going around. Fast forward to 2015, and uh, look at that. Uh, it's down to just a tiny little patch. So it's been coming and going in parts of Nigeria, but uh, for now it seems to be gone. And uh, it's been coming and going in this region right here, around sort of Pakistan, Afghanistan, and generally, it's the same region where there was a lot of um, Al Qaeda activity, and uh, it's because uh, because this was a sort of a region where you couldn't get doctors in to vaccinate people. People weren't getting vaccinated. There was still a little bit of polio around from the old vaccinations, and so uh, it did spread there. Um, when the war erupted in Syria, the Syrian civil war, then you had polio spread over to Syria. But thankfully, they managed to get the Red Cross into enough of those camps. And Red Crescent is the uh, Islamic version of the Red Cross. And they were able to eradicate it once again in uh, Syria. So we can go and see uh, how we're doing. Let's see. PolioEradication.org. Polio this week. So let's copy that. Oh, yeah. I remember my copy key is broken. But we can do this. Uh, copy. Great, and let's go and boom. Have a look, see if we can find it. Wait for the internet. Okay, polio this week, yes. Okay, year to date, uh, 2020, um, uh, wild polio virus, uh, 33 uh, globally, 33, all 33 of those were in endemic countries. Where are the endemic countries? Well, here we go. Afghanistan. Yeah, all right. Um, so some of these other uh, ones that you see here are... Um, so this is circulating vaccine-derived poliovirus. So this is vaccines that have uh, uh, vaccinated people that have managed to infect other people uh, with the vaccine strain. And there you go, Pakistan. Uh, and this is not central Pakistan. This is the thing called the Northwest Frontier Province. Um, this is the area where uh, Osama bin Laden was hiding out for a little while, or was thought to be hiding out, uh, right there along the border with Afghanistan. Um, and then, of course, he went elsewhere, because yeah. <laughs> he had a lot of money, so he could go where he wants. Uh, yeah, and that's what happened. So uh, there's both a lot of vaccine-derived polio and uh, a lot of polio. But when a lot is only 31 cases, you know we are really close to the end of uh, polio. So we're just trying to get rid of it in these last couple of countries. Um, you see all these countries that had a little bit in 2019, Benin and Chad and all these places, and are now um, uh, poliovirus negative. Uh, and so once they've been negative for over a year, uh, once they've been negative for two years, I believe, then they just take them off the list completely. They're no longer considered endemic. So there you go. That's a nice little story. Okay. Other part of our little story. So, remember Coxsackie virus? Yeah, that was a while ago. So, this is looking at um, the association between antibodies against enteroviruses. So, this is people who have made an immune response against some different enterovirus, and there are hundreds of these things that infect uh, people. They're all just classified as enterovirus, but they're all these different types. And so uh, like CVA4 is Coxsackie virus A4, E1 is going to be enterovirus 1, uh, EV74 is probably uh, echovirus 74, or I may have those backwards with entero as E and echo as, uh, let's see. Oh, there we go. E is echovirus, EV is enterovirus. So there you go. These are uh, all the different kinds of things. And what they're looking at are, there are several of these where 
um, having neutralizing antibodies seems to be linked to having type 1 diabetes. So uh, they were calculating the odds ratio, basically how strong is the link between having a virus as a kid and then getting diabetes, because diabetes type 1 is an autoimmune condition. So it's when your body is attacking itself, or rather your immune system is attacking uh, some of the cells in your pancreas. And the thought is and remains that this is due to um, uh, like an overreaction to an old virus that you had as a kid. So a lot of people, but not everybody who gets type 1 diabetes had a really bad infection with something, usually a virus, as a kid. So, all right, um, this is now looking, uh, just narrowing it down. So Coxsackie virus B1 um, uh, versus B3. And if you look there, if they didn't have B3 and they didn't have B6, but they did have Coxsackie virus B1, then their odds ratio, that's the OR, so the likelihood that you will get diabetes compared to anybody else, is calculated at uh, 2.5. So uh, about one and a half times as likely to f almost five times as likely. And the p-value shows that this is uh, highly significant. So uh, yeah, that's interesting. Um, so uh, Coxsackie virus 3 and 6 don't seem to um, actually uh, do anything in particular. Uh, that's bad for you, but uh, Coxsackie virus B1 seems to be associated with uh, type, 1, uh, type 1 diabetes. Yeah. And so uh, this is also looking at the same thing. So this is, uh, remember, as a mother, you're giving your children milk, and that milk contains, uh, breast milk is going to contain antibodies. And so if the mother has had Coxsackie virus B1, she will pass along antibodies in the breast milk. And then theoretically, um, the question is, what does that do to the uh, risk that um, uh, one day the child will have um, uh, Coxsackie virus? And so the risk uh, ends up being... Let's see. Uh, yeah, uh, so if the cord blood is negative, so the child wasn't infected, but then the child is positive at 18 months, meaning they picked up the antibodies from mom after, then, uh, yeah, it looks as though that also increases very much the uh, risk of autoimmunity. So it looks as though those uh, antibodies passed over from mother to baby can contribute to uh, uh, autoimmunity and uh, diabetes. Yeah. And so uh, bah, 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 this word is wrong. Where it says reduces, it should say increases. Oops. Uh, da, 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 da. You know what? There we go. Because uh, the C key doesn't work. <laughs> there we go. We fixed that for you. Okay, so that's the end of this little section on disease, just so you have an idea. I'm not going to ask any questions about the disease, but I thought you would want to know, because uh, this, is, this is what we're trying to prevent with these polio vaccines. And polio used to be terrible. But now it is kind of almost no longer a thing. And that's really wonderful for the world. So thank you very much. This has been Picornaviruses. See you for the next vibe.